in Kosinani. Sisters and brothers in Christ, I have come in the name of the whole church to present to you Hamilton Charles in Kosinati in Rwanda, your bishop, and to enthrone him that all may know him to be rightly elected and consecrated Bishop of Natal, and give him that esteem and the love which are due to him for the work's sake as one set over you in the Lord. Hammingfield, Charles Mkosinati, Rwandwe, Bishop in the Church of God and our Bishop, we welcome you to your cathedral, the symbol and center of your pastoral, liturgical, and teaching ministry in the diocese. I, Hammingfield, Charles Mkosinati, Rwandwe, your Bishop, Thank you for your welcome. I promise God helping me to be a faithful shepherd and servant among you. I pray that the ministry which we shall share may be pleasing to God and that it may strengthen the life of this diocese and the whole church of God.
profusely for starting late. Those that work with me know that every minute that passes and you don't keep time, my whole internal organs just shrivel. But we had a technical glitch. The deed of collation was left in Cape Town in the PO's office. So we had to get a staff member from home to go into the office and to send it via WhatsApp, so the joys of technology at least, but sincere, sincerest apologies for staying uh, late. Nkosinati and the people of Natal, in holy baptism we received full adoption through God's grace and full empowerment of ministry through the Holy Spirit. Will you work together as partners in the mission of the church to reconcile all people to God through Christ. With God's help, we will. O God, sanctify this water by the power of your Holy Spirit 
that all who in baptism are cleansed from sin and born again may continue forever in the risen life of Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Let us therefore renew the promises made at our baptism to renounce the world, the flesh, and the devil, to believe the Christian faith, and to keep God's holy will and commandments. So I invite you who are ready to do so to affirm your rejection of all that is evil. Do you renounce the devil and all spiritual forces of wickedness that rebel against God? I renounce them. We are wala yin on command of Ubi Glum Saba, Sebenza won and Ubisa, Lokok Dalum Kulukuluna. We are Zala Zongi in Kanugas in Basic Holela Gut and not Handul Gangulunguluna. Now, in allegiance to Christ, you must declare before God and His Church that you accept the Christian faith into which you were baptized and in which you will continue to live and grow. Do you believe and trust in God the Father who made the world? I believe and trust in Him. Do you believe and trust in His Son, Jesus Christ, who redeemed humankind? I believe and trust in Him. Do you believe and trust in His Holy Spirit? who gives life to the people of God? I believe and trust in him. This is the faith of the church. This is our faith. We believe and trust in one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Will you faithfully play your part in the life and fellowship of the church? With God's help, I will. We are with the Lord in the world, the Lord in the world, and the Will you, by your life and witness, share in the church's mission to proclaim the gospel and to set forward peace and justice among all people? With Almighty God, who gives you the will to do all these things, grant you also the power to perform them, that God may complete the work which God has begun in you, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.
To whom all hearts open, all desires go, and from whom no secrets are Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and widely magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. With all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the first and great commandment. And the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments depend all the law and the prophets. Let us confess our sins. Almighty God, to whom, to whom all hearts are open, in all penitence we confess that we have sinned against you through our own fault. collect your purity. Can you now confess our sins? Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, in penitence we confess that we have sinned against you through our own fault in thought, word, and deed, and in what we have left undone. For the sake of your Son, Christ our Lord, forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in newness of life to the glory of your name. Unkulunkulu somandla o tethele la bonke ava pentukayo ngukunisileyo makani haukele ani tethele izo nuzenu ani kululu okuzo Ani mese, ani kinese, ebulungeni konke. Ani trine, ebupileni, ebupagati. Ngo Yesu Christ in Kosietu. Amen. Ma si tandaze. Gracious God, through your Holy Spirit, you have appointed many ministries in the church. Bless your servant Mkosimati, now called to be a shepherd in this diocese. Maintain him in your truth. Renew him in your holiness. And make him your ever faithful servant through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. O God of love, your embrace includes everyone. Open our hearts and minds to your generous will that in what we say and do we proclaim Christ's love and serve the needs of our neighbors. Through our Lord Jesus Christ who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> Thank you. 
isifundo sipadwe kweyo kuqala ka Timotheu isahluko esoqala kuyaqala kusahlukana se shumi nanhlanu A reading from 1 Timothy chapter 1 beginning at verse 15 Likholekile leli lizwi lifanele impela ukwamukelwa ukuthi Kristu Jesu weza ezweni ukusindisa izoni engingesikhulu kuzo kepha ngaha ukelwa ngalokhu ukuze uJesu Kristu abonakalise kimi engingesikhulu konke ukubekezela kwakhe ngibe isibonelo kwaza bakukholwa nguye baze babe nokuphila okuphakade kuye inkosi yaphakade ngabhubhiyo engena kubonwa unkulunkulu yedwa makube ludumo nenkazimulo kuze kube phakade naphakade amen yizwani izwi lenkosi The appointed psalm for the service is Psalm 113. We will alternate verses. I will say the odd numbered verses, and you will say the even numbered verses. And we'll say the Gloria together at the end. Praise the Lord. O sing praises, you that are his servants. O praise the name of the Lord. Let the name of the Lord be blessed from this, from this time forward and forever. From the rising of the sun to its going down, let the name of the Lord be praised. The Lord is exalted over all the nations, and his glory is above all. Who can be likened to the Lord our God in heaven or upon the earth? Who has his dwelling so high, yet condescends to look on things beneath. He raises the lofty from the dust, and lifts the poor from out of the dung heap. He gives them a place among the princes, even among the princes of his people. He causes the barren woman to keep house and makes a joyful mother of children. Praise the Lord. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. We all stand in preparation for the Christ John. Jesus, 
be with you and also with you listen to the good news proclaim the gospel of Luke chapter 6 reading from verse 43 glory, glory to Christ, Christ our Savior the gospel of Luke chapter 6 from verse 43 No good tree bears bad fruit. No again does a bad tree bear good fruit. For each tree is known by its own fruit. Figs are not gathered from thorns. No are grapes picked from a bramble bush. The good person out of the good treasure of the heart produces good. And the evil person out of evil treasure produces evil. For it is out of the abundance of the heart that the mouth speaks. Why do you call me Lord, Lord, and do not do what I tell you? I will show you what someone is like who comes to me, hears my words, and acts on them. That one is like a man building a house who dug deeply and laid the foundation on a rock. On rock. When a flood arose, the river burst against that house but could not shake it because it has been well built. But the one who hears and does not act is like a man who built a house on the ground without a foundation. When the river burst against it, immediately it fell, and great was the ruin of that house. This is the gospel of Christ.
May I speak in the name of God, the Father, God, the Son, and God, the Holy Spirit. Amen. The theme for today's message is Foundation Matters. The gospel text assigned for today is part of what is known in Luke's gospel as the Sermon on the Plain. And it bears a resemblance to what Jesus says in the gospel of Matthew chapters 5 to 7. Matthew, unlike Luke, calls it the Sermon on the Mount. The verses that were read in today's gospel are part of an end, the conclusion of Jesus' series of teachings. And this section of teachings is full of parables. A question was once asked, what is the difference between a fable and a parable? And the answer is, a fable is primarily moral, a clever story meant to offer some insight and all instructions about life. A parable, on the other hand, is intended to be disruptive, to interrupt what you thought you knew and not just teach you something, but to confront you with a surprisingly and often unwanted truth. Jesus opened his sermon on the plain with a description of the blessings that belong to those who have entered the kingdom of God and a warning to those who have not yet entered the kingdom of God by professing faith in him. Then Jesus goes on to, dis to describe how his disciples are to live as citizens of the kingdom of God. He said that they must love their enemies, not judge others, and examine the fruits of their lives. Finally, like a good preacher, Jesus concluded his sermon with a personal application. Jesus challenged his disciples and will be followers to inspect whether their discipleship was genuine or are they faking it? Or is it a Hong Kong, this Christianity that they embrace? Let me briefly share with you the Old Testament te context of this parable. And this is found in Isaiah chapter 28, verses 14 to 18. Isaiah had no confidence in the house the people of Israel had built. This was the agreement with Egypt. And predicted that a great storm was on its way. And this storm was in the form of Assyria. That storm will destroy their building. But in the future, God will lay a new cornerstone in Zion. And that will be a sure foundation for a new building. The foundation will not be an ordinary rock, but a gemstone. Over the intervening 600 years, this text had become a physical stone in the second temple in Jerusalem. On the day of atonement, the high priest will enter the Holy of Holies carrying a large pan of burning charcoal covered with incense. In the center of the Holy of Holies, there was a stone slightly elevated from the rest of the floor. On that stone, he will place the fire pan. The stone was called foundation. Isisekelo, muteo. No explanation is given as to why it was called foundation. For the Jews of Christ's day, 
the holy of holies was the most sacred spot on all the earth and the stone was in zion at the center of the temple complex therefore for the average jew the temple was built on the foundation stone in today's gospel luke chapter 6 jesus the christ stands up and offers a new understanding that the words of Isaiah concerning this precious foundation stone are fulfilled in him in obedience to his words. To hear and to do my words, Jesus said, was to build on the foundation that Isaiah had promised. Jesus was saying, I am the foundation stone. Build on me. Build on my words. And you will not be shaken when you encounter the storms of life. Jesus preferred to use the construction terminology to drive the message home. We all know by now from Sunday school that Jesus' profession was being a carpenter. And in those days, a carpenter did not work only with wood, but also with stone. Besides his understanding of the text from Isaiah, he also relies on the knowledge of his profession to make his listeners comprehend what it means to be his follower. What the text teaches us is that the outward appearance of a house built on a strong foundation or the rock and the one built on the same might look the same to an untrained eye. But as long as the weather is good. But the test eventually comes. Jesus says when and not if. So this is the promise that in our lives, we're going to encounter storms. He says when the storm or the stream broke against it or the flood arises, it will heat this house that has been built. But the story is the foundation, not the building. Meaning a Christian is not someone who gets to be identified by their talk of fierce quotation of scripture, nor by the uniform of the guild or organization they belong to, nor by the vestments that we wear, because to an untrained eye, we look the same. We are just Christians to them. A follower of Christ, a Christian is identified with deeds, decades on how we deal or fare when we face the storms of life. Christianity is not intended to be an item of clothing that you can put on and take it off when it suits you. If it is who and what you are, especially when there's, an, there's no audience to perform for, when it is only you and your creator. For Jesus, being his follower requires proper laying of a foundation. Just like in construction of a building, the purpose of a foundation is to determine if and how well the house will stand. It serves to support and stabilize the building for as long as the building is needed. That includes the worst of circumstances. Good foundations are not meant to blend with the environment. They are meant to support the building. Those who are in construction business will tell you that a foundation is not built when it's raining or when rain is forecast. A foundation 
is built when the sun is up. A good, solid foundation function to distribute the weight of your home, stopping the plot subsoil from spreading and the structure facing an unequal settlement, which could lead to structural problems for your building down the line. Our general Christianity is not built in the midst of storms. When the storms come, this foundation needs to be strong enough to carry us. Being a Christian is not to assimilate and be like others. It's to be who and what God has prepared you to be. Diocese of Natal, Bishop-elect Ndwanwe, foundation matters. Good foundation matters. The foundation of this diocese has long been laid. You are not coming to construct the foundation, Baba. It's already here. Today, we continue to build on that foundation. Just like moving into any building, a structural evaluation will be carried out. Checking whether the roofs are not leaking or whether there are no cracks on the walls. You'll evaluate the diocese, Baba. This evaluation will be a prayerful process that you undertake with the leadership and the faithful of this diocese as you begin your episcopacy. Let your episcopacy build on the Anglican principle of a diocese that episcopally led and synodically governed. Guard against falling into the trap of congressionalism or congressional polity. And congressionalism, it is a cancer that will creep into our church if we are not aware of it. Because this is a system of church polity which says every parish is independent, ecclesiastically sovereign or autonomous, forgetting that we are joined to each other. Our church, the Anglican Church, has threefold order of ministry. May this continue. May new vocations be encouraged, descend, and supported. Ongoing formation for your clergy, Bishop elect, it should not be an option for the few, but a requirement for every clergy person as this will assist not only you, but the church to leave out its promises and commission, but for us clergy to remember daily and often the vows and the charges that were made on our ordination. Do not forget the laity, the lay people. As we move forward, they cannot be left behind. They are the big bone of the church, our financiers. They enable, enable ministries and programs to happen. They should come forth. I know there's a debate in the Anglican church about talking about fourfold ministry, but we can creep this in and say the lady comes in and we talk of fourfold ministry. The church thrives and grows when we as Christians work in partnership and not in competition with each other. Amongst your many tasks that you will have, Bishop-elect, please do not forget that as the bishop, the diocesan, you have a special responsibility and authority as the chief pastor, minister, and teacher of the diocese a governor and guardian of dis discipline in the diocese and exercise ministry in accordance with the law. As bishop, you are a chief pastor and are required to foster the spiritual welfare and unity of this diocese. 
Your ministry in the Diocese of Natal comes at a time of coronavirus pandemic and not so long ago of the riots and looting that has affected this country and especially your diocese. Both these things have had a huge devastating impact on our lives and the church has not been spared. If any lesson has been learned in the past 18 months of living with the pandemic is that we need each other. We need each other. Nothing should be taken for granted, even the breath that we breathe at this moment. And that God and our worship and how we worship God cannot be contained in the building. We have learned that in the past 18 months, that ministry and worship does take place outside of these walls. My prayer for you as you take this new journey and chapter in your life and ministry is that the Diocese of Natal and the whole Church of God may be an oasis for the weary, the thirsty, the tired, and those who are fearful and those in need of a word of hope and kind kindness. May this be a place that envelopes us and embraces us and tell us that we are loved as we are. Where people are taken care of and are cared for regardless of their financial or social status where the safety of children and women will not be regulated, but it should be a thing that the church is safe. That anyone who steps in our properties should know that they are safe. Where the care of the environment becomes our second nature. All this and many more will resemble a diocese and a church built on a strong foundation, which is Christ our Lord. And it will be truly not our church, not your church, but the church of God. So as you take this journey, may the Lord take you through this, and may you remember that the foundation has already been laid. Amen. Most Reverend Father in God, the Archbishop and Metropolitan of the Church of Southern Africa, we present Hummingfield Charles and Kosanati Nduande to be installed as the Bishop of Natal. Bishop Nduande, at your ordination as Bishop, you received the gift of the Holy Spirit that you might lead the church into mission and send out ministers in Christ's name. That you might promote its unity, uphold its discipline, and guard its faith and that you might teach and govern the people committed to your charge. 
Will you continue faithfully in this ministry, watching over Christ's own flock here in the Diocese of Natal and building them up in the unity of the Holy Spirit and the bond of peace? With God's help, I will. Thank you. And now we're going to ask the Dean to come and put the Bishop of Natal in his place. In the name of God, Amen. Amen. I, having filled Charles Ngosnat in Dwandre, by divine permission, Bishop of Natal, hereby promise to respect, maintain, and defend the rights, privileges, and liberties of this diocese, and to administer oversight in it with truth, justice, and love not lording it over God's heritage, but showing myself in all things an example to the flock of Christ. So help me God. I, Dean of the Cathedral of the Holy Nativity, on behalf of the diocese, now install you, Cosenati, as the Bishop of Natal in your Cathedral Church of the Holy Nativity. May the Lord preserve your going and your coming in from this time forth and forevermore. Amen. Cosenati. May the Lord himself support you. May the people honor you. May you show yourself worthy, just, lowly, and steadfast. A true apostle of Christ Jesus, our Savior, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and in the days to come. Amen. Amen. Well, before we continue the presentation, people of Natal, um, we want you to welcome Bishop Nkosinasti. I know with uh, protocols and all those things, we can't ululate as we normally would have done so. But let's warmly welcome Bishop Nkosinati into Natal. Now, 
Somebody is supposed to give me a ring to give it to you. It's already there. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Now we'll get to Pell. Thank you. Congratulations. It's the Chancellor chapter and all those things to the Okay. Let's in the there. So the congregation sits at this time with the cathedral chapter, the chancellor, the deputy registrar, and the diocesan secretary, and the leaders of various diocesan organizations do homage to the bishop. And we're going to ask him if we can bring a chair for the bishop, please. We can sit on your feet. Oh, let, 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 yeah. No, let, yeah, we want to see him. Let, yeah. Yeah, bring the chair here, please. They've got it. Chapter. Bishop Nkosnati, I present to you the blessing and the tower. Continue being a faithful servant of Christ. Amen. Bishop Kosinati, I present to you the oil for healing. Bishop of Kostati, I present to you the spiral. Bishop Nkosinati, you're going to have many Bibles, but press and preach the Word of God. We present to you the, the Bible. Thank you, Christ. Thank you. Just before the peace, I would like to warmly welcome you to the service and also those that are watching through YouTube and Facebook and all the other virtual uh, connections. But a special welcome to Bishop Mostert, Christ of Christ the King, Bishop Willie, please wait. And Bishop Luke Pretorius from the Doctors of St. Mark. Luke, welcome. And uh, Bishop Tietzi from the Doctors of Zimbabwe, welcome. And uh, Bishop Michael Natal, you need no introduction here, but please just wave for those on Facebook to, to welcome you, welcome. And Bishop uh, Ruben Philip, you also need no welcome, uh, but a warm welcome. And Bishop Dino, uh, a warm welcome. I think the Mad Lambs is here, Mad Lamini, welcome. And uh, Bishop Ebenezer of Gramstown, who was one of the presenting bishops, welcome. And Bishop Raphael Hess from Saldana Bay, uh, welcome. And we've got uh, Bishop Kosinati Miyaka of ECLSA, uh, welcome. 
and uh, we've got uh, the Dean of the Province, uh, Bishop Diseko. Uh, a warm welcome uh, to you. I also want to take this opportunity to thank the people of the Diocese of Natal. You know, uh, since Bishop Dino retired from here, I've been the Diocesan Bishop in terms of Canon 22. It's been such a joy and challenge to work with you. Uh, Sandra, thank you for all the hard work. And Dean, uh, both as Dean and Vicar General, you really have been outstanding. There was a stage where I thought, oh, Lord, uh, we mustn't kill the Dean with so much work uh, because we kept on piling and piling uh, all, all the work in your direction. So thank you so much for what you did. And then to Canon Bellina, who also joined as they call uh, Vicar General. So we deeply appreciate uh, your work and what you, you meant and mean for this diocese and the trustees it's been wonderful also to, to work with you and some of the decisions uh, that we took that may implicate you uh, Bishop, well I was a bishop for a short time so I may have made decisions that you may want to affirm or reverse but I had to lead during that uh, interact now so let's give those a warm round of applause, please. We have the Dean and Vicar General of Mikata and the Provost. Okay, thank you. And we've got the Dean and the Vicar, Dean, who is the Vicar General of Mikata and the Provost. Where, where are they? Please, uh, let's, uh, thank you so much. Thank you so much. Uh, and the Provost, please stand. Let's welcome them also. And Bishop Nkosinati uh, has got a family, and Mom Zanele is here. You heard her read the lesson. Uh, Mom Zanele, please stand so that we could just really acknowledge you. Thank you. That's Mom Zanele. <laughs> and as, as soon as I do this, I'm bound to forget people, but you are all very special. Uh, the IT people, uh, the team that has brought the service uh, together. Um, I know Reverend Manning, you're always somewhere doing something. I don't know what it is, but thank you very much. And um, yeah, I'll come through. Bridge. And um, uh, Bruce, I, all, I know EO uh, for all the hard work uh, between election and where we are. There's a lot of hard work. And thank you also. Uh, Deputy Registrar, uh, uh, for being, being present. And then lastly, but it's not the, the, the last person, let me thank the Rector of the College, uh, who was our preacher today, uh, Dr. Kabe, thank you for your message. Let's give the preacher a round of applause, please. Please stand for the peace. Christ is our peace. He has reconciled us to God by the cross. We meet in his name and share his peace. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Peace be with you. Please wave to expect the COVID protocols. Thank you. And thank you very much, choir and servers. Thank you. Thank you. Sandra. Thank you. So I can't bully you with my WhatsApps and things now. You've got a bishop. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Peace. 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 Thank you. Peace. Peace. Did I say peace?
Bless thy Lord God of all creation, through your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made, for us it becomes the bread of life. Bless, Bless us, Lord. We are born in Angosun Kulukulu and Daloyonke, 
Lelo ene sinike la ili tolo so mvinu msebe nzwe zanda za bantu. Sintole ngo musa wako. Liza kwa isisha setu sinzindi iso. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is indeed right. It is our duty and our joy at all times and in all places to give you thanks and praise, Holy Father, Heavenly King, Almighty and Eternal God, through Jesus Christ, your only Son, our Lord. Because through him you have created everything from the beginning and formed us in your own image. Through him you delivered us from the slavery of sin when you gave him to be born as men, to die on the cross and to rise again for us. Through him you claimed us as your own people when you enthroned him with you in heaven, and through him sent out your Holy Spirit, the giver of life. And now we give you thanks that your son sent the apostles to be heralds of your reign on earth, to witness to his resurrection, that through them the gospel of salvation is carried into all the world, and that all may believe in him. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name, forever praising you and saying, Father, through your Son, Christ our Lord, through him accept our offering of thanks and praise, and send your Holy Spirit upon us and upon these gifts of bread and wine, so that there may be to us his body and his blood. For on the night that he was betrayed, he took bread, and when he had given you thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. So too after supper he took the cup, and when he had given you thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you, for this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this in remembrance of me.
proclaim the mystery of faith. Bonwele Tinabandu Bakus Kupalum Kosi, Sibega Pam Wakung Alis Zipuzako, Um Saja Lot or No Peleleuka Christian Gosietu, Kanya Nukwaka or Fileo, Nogenuela Wakin Kazmlenia Sazuin, Gos and Um Sasam Gelesi Gui and Agbasna Fanele, Ubatines Tanganela Musin Banekas Lindot and Akos Bemunye, Nabonka Bantubaka Kolegayo, Manje, Nanga Katazonke. Sepe uba siti sikulinde leguza ka kristu msindi suetu. Ngotu mwono ngoba kumbuso wake. Sikule njale kumfuzeni. Kutunye subaja zo iba ndalonke la semtabende nilase zuluini. Baba sumanda. Ganye na ye. Naguye. Nangaye. Nga manda ka moya o ingwele. Ezu zonke. Manje na pagate We who are many are one body, for we all partake of the one bread.
Kom nader en ontvang die lichaam van onze Heer Jezus Christus, wat hij voor u gegeven het, en zijn bloed, wat hij voor u gestort het. Nettig Christus en u harte, die er geloof met dank zeggen. Just before we receive communion, I uh, just want to state that there will be two points. There will be four communion points. Uh, in the truth war, there will be two. May I ask the, the clergy from the chapter that have been assigned the task to come forward. And then there will be two communion points in here. The Archbishop and the Bishop of Natal will um, minister in, this, in the cathedral. Thank you. The church wardens, please help us as side people. Thank you.
Bani Yosuma Gati Ngo Gubani Musa Baba Somandla Sizi Nikela Kuwe Siku Yesu Christi Nko Sietu Kukuba Sibe Mishache La Upilayo Situ Mele Ezweli Kamandla Mori Nwani Siti Nisa Sizi Nko Sietu God, our creator and protector of all who believe in you, look with mercy on Kosinati, your chosen servant, to lead your church. Make that through his word and deed he may be an example to your flock so as to reach the joy of your eternal reign. For Christ's sake, amen. God bless Africa, protect our children, transform our leaders, heal our communities, restore our dignity, and give us peace. For Jesus Christ's sake, amen. So listen to the notices. The last item on the agenda for today. Um, if your sticker, the one that you got this morning, as you did our restrictions, our COVID tests, um, if you are having a red sticker, that means you are going to the Ndwandwe room. The Ndwandwe room is on the first floor. And if you have got a yellow sticker, you are also going on the first floor, which is how you are going to the, sorry, the yellow one, you are going to the to the tooth wall, which is just on the on the ground floor here. The green, you are going to the green room on the first floor. Blue, you are going to the in man on the first floor. Let me repeat. Red sticker, you are going to the Nduande room on the first floor. Yellow, you are going to the ground floor here, which is the tutu hall. And then green, you are going to the green room on the first floor. Blue, you are going to the Inman wall for our meals. Thank you. I would like to take this uh, opportunity of thanking His Grace, Archbishop Tabo, for having taken the trouble of uh, coming to the Diocese of Natal today to install our new Diocese and Bishop, Sobaba Nkosinati. Thank you, Your Grace. But also, thank you for having looked after the diocese from the time we, the Bishop of Natal, Bishop Dino, stepped down. And then, in your capacity as the Metropolitan you had to undertake this responsibility which you shared with the Vicar Generals. We are truly and are sincerely thankful to you, Your Grace. But we also wish to thank Umam Lungi who allows you to take this uh, daunting task and ministries within the province to travel around and so forth. And so please do convey our heartfelt thanks to her as well. 
May I also welcome our diocesan bishop, our brand new diocesan bishop, We are very grateful to God that we have you, Soba Bazuide, as our shepherd in this diocese. May I assure you that you are loved in this diocese and that the people will support you, especially the leadership of this diocese. They will indeed be joining with you but also you can count on the, bless, on the prayers of the saints that uh, as you work along, minister to us as our shepherd, that the prayers will indeed surround you. We would like to thank the visiting bishops, the retired bishops um, uh, who are here, as well as all the visiting bishops, especially the presenting bishops, Bishop Charlie and Bishop Raphael Hess. It's always a joy to have you in our diocese, especially because you have journeyed with us from the time the elective assembly was announced. You represented the provincial team. You have journeyed with us uh, throughout all the processes we truly are grateful to you, uh, both bishops. To the preacher, I know the Archbishop has already uh, thanked her, but on behalf of the Diocese of Natal, we thank you. What a powerful message. We needed just that. And we want to assure you that truly the diocese will remain grounded on the foundation, the foundation being Christ and nothing else. And so thank you very much. To each and every one of you, without mentioning any names, we thank you for your presence. Those who watched this service virtually, we thank you. We are, I'm sure we are all aware of the pandemic because of that, we had to limit the numbers of people to attend the service. Nevertheless, we were one in spirit. I pray that since we now have the shepherd, that we shall gather around the shepherd, give him all the support that he needs. Uh, all the resources that are required for him to carry out this ministry effectively. And we want to assure him that we shall truly be in solidarity with him. Whether the storms or the weather is fine, the flock shall indeed be with you and ready to listen to your voice. Lastly, I want to give thanks to God for the ministry of the co-vicar general, Canon Bellina, and we give thanks to God for all that she has done during the, her tenure as the co-vicar general. I'm praying that the Lord will bless this diocese and that all that we wish for ourselves and that we pray for as a diocese, that we shall indeed rise up as the phoenix. Let's hold on each other together. Let's move on together. Let's know one thing that we are indeed a family, the family of Christ. If that spirit continues to prevail within the diocese, I am more than certain that God will bless us with his showers, abundant showers 
of his blessings. Now, the procession, when we move out to bless the city and the diocese, when the new bishop goes out together with the archbishop, the processions will be reversed. The second procession led by the archbishop and the new bishop of the Diocese of Natal will go out first, followed by the second procession of the visiting bishops, and then the rest of the congregation will face towards the main door until the final blessing of the city and the diocese is done. I thank you. Our help is in the name of the Lord, who has made heaven and earth. The peace of God which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. One, five, one, two. I'll have to grab here because of no COVID. This is our reference at the altar. No?
May God the Father, surrounded by the angels and saints, look with the eyes of his mercy upon this city and douses. Banish from it all poverty, violence and discord and make it a place of peace, unity and safety for all its people. May God the Son, Redeemer and Brother of all humankind, open wide the arms of his love to all people of this city and douses. And may he draw us to himself by his holy nativity and by the sacred wounds of his passion. May God the Holy Spirit ceaselessly at work in all the world be present among the multitudes of this city and douses to bring us to that justice and truth, that unity and love for which he teaches our hearts to yearn. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon this city and thousands and all its people now and always. Amen. May God's blessing rest upon you, bless you and keep you in all his love and mercy. Amen. Amen. May God's blessing rest upon you, bless you, you and keep you always. Amen. Okay, thank you. So we have to. Amen. <laughs> May God's blessing rest upon you. May bless you and keep you always. Amen. Take me back to the Thank you. Thank you. May God's blessing rest upon you. Bless you and keep you in his love always. Amen.